Hello, welcome to another video. Sometimes you might just pick up a problem like this, even if it's not assigned to you to do, just so you could practice how to do a lot of algebra that many people run away from. And I guarantee you that if you try to do derivatives from first principles, you're going to have to use many algebra tricks that you may have forgotten or you might have to remind yourself of. So this is why you should. I know you know how to do the derivatives or you know the derivatives of many functions, but try to do them using the definition of the derivative. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So we're going to take the derivative of 1 over x cubed using the definition. And remember that this may have been written as x to the negative 3. So even if it's written in this form, know that you, sh you should not be intimidated. The definition always works. It might take some complicated algebra, but it always works. Let's get into it. So now using the definition of the derivative, we're going to say that the derivative we have here, f prime of x, will be equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, we're going to have 1 over, but instead of writing x cubed, we're going to write x plus h cubed minus the function itself, which is 1 over x cubed, everything divided by h. So what comes after this is how well you can simplify algebraic expressions. And in one step, all you have to do is look at all the fractions involved in the complex rational expression. And because these two are not the same, you can say, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by these two. So um, there's not enough space to do that here, but let me show you what you're supposed to do here. Um, you're going to say f prime of x. This is in one step will be equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over x plus h cubed minus 1 over x cubed divided by h. But now we're going to multiply the top and bottom, and this is how you can write that. A shorthand way of writing it is to draw a stroke here and say that you're going to multiply by x cubed x plus h cubed. So this means you're multiplying the top and the bottom by the same thing. And if we do that, see what we end up with. This x cubed times x plus h cubed, when it multiplies this, this is going to cancel this out. And what you have left is just x cubed. And x cubed times 1 gives you x cubed. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of just x cubed on top. Minus. What do we have? We'll have to multiply this by this, and this is going to cancel this out. And what you have is just, oh, we don't have to put a parenthesis. It's just going to be, oh yeah, x plus h cubed. This is too long. Okay. And you're done. You've cleared the top. And the bottom is going to be h times all of this. So your answer is going to be h x cubed x plus h cubed. So our next line is to... Expand this because that's the part we can expand and remember do not touch the bottom every time you do this Kind of differentiation when you differentiate from first principles do not Expand the bottom do not do anything don't simplify just leave it the way it is because it will simplify itself eventually So let's go ahead and continue so we have f prime of x will be equal to the limit as h goes to zero of we're going to have x cubed minus the expansion of this has to be x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. Okay, so it's going to be, um, but you can use Pascal's triangle. Okay, Pascal's triangle says we're going to have 1, 3, 3, 1. See, Pascal's triangle is this. Then you have, um, you have 1, you have 1, and then you have 1, 2, 1, and then you have 1, 3, 3, one. So this is what we have. This is the expansion. <laughs> okay. So this is one term. This is two terms, three terms. And here, this is when you have x to the third power. This is what determines the power, I mean, of the expansion. So this is what I'm going to use, actually. So I'm going to have one times this raised to power three. If you don't know pa Pascal's triangle, just Google it. 
okay? So it's going to be 1 times x raised to the power 3, and then you're going to have plus. The next one is going to be 3 times x raised to the power. You just reduce this power to 2, and then you introduce h, which is the second guy here, and then, so while you reduce this, you increase this. So this goes from 3 to 0, the powers, and the powers of this go from 0, 1, and then the next one will be 2, but the number you're going to use next is 3, which is going to be x raised to power. This power was 2, now it's going to be 1, and h was 1, now it's going to be 2, so that every time when you add the two powers, you always get 3, which is the total power on this. You should practice Pascal's triangle. It's, it saves you all the time. Plus, and finally, we're going to have 1 as the coefficient, and then we're going to have no x, and all of it will be h to the third power. So I'm just going to write h cubed. And that's it. That's the expansion. Instead of doing it twice, you do it once. Now let's go back here. And all of this will be divided by the denominator. Remember, do not simplify. h x cubed times x plus h cubed. Okay, now let's go on. This is the limit as h goes to 0 of, if we remove this negative sign, you're going to have x cubed minus x cubed minus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus, what do we have here? h to the, everything is, hey, it's minus, minus. Everything is minus. Okay, here we go divided by h x cubed times x plus h cubed. Beautiful. So at this point, we need to simplify. We know these two will cancel each other out. We don't need to waste time on these two. So everything else contains an h and everything else not, not So the only thing common to all of them is h. In fact, negative h. So we can take out negative h and say that the limit as h goes to zero of negative h, let's put negative h outside here, and if we factor negative h from these, you're going to end up with 3x squared, plus, this is going to be 3xh, minus, this is going to be, uh, sorry, it's going to be plus h squared, all divided by h times x cubed, multiplied by x plus h cubed. Nice. This will take this out so that you have your limit as h goes to 0. The negative sign will remain, so I'm going to keep it here, and this is what I have left. On top, I'm going to have 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared. Under, I'm going to have just x cubed because this h is gone, and then I have x plus h cubed. Mm. So I have the limit. I'm going to plug in h. Because up to until this point, if you plugged in h at any point, h equals 0, you're going to get the indeterminate form 0 over 0. But now we've gotten rid, rid of the h. Let's try and plug in the h. Since this is finite, plug in 0. So what do we get? This is going to be 0. Everything here becomes 0. This becomes 0. This goes to 0. So you'll have negative 3 x squared plus 0. This is 0, this is 0. Let's just write it 0 plus 0 divided by x cubed times x plus 0 cubed times x plus 0 cubed. Ah, look at what that gives us. This gives us negative 3x squared divided by this is x because x plus 0 cubed is just x cubed. So x cubed times x cubed is x to the sixth. Well, we know that if we simplify this, we're going to get negative 3 over x to the fourth. And this is the derivative of 1 over x cubed by the definition of what we call first principles. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.